who likes Wi-Fi? So today we're gonna work on getting Wi-Fi out to the pond and kind of in the barn lot area. And here's how we're gonna do it. I have these two different access points from Wavelength that we're gonna mount just outside the barn here to get coverage over the pond area. These are actually slightly different even though they're both called the AX3000. I'll get into that a little bit later. But first I'm gonna show you guys a setup and talk about why I'm even doing this. I feel like this is a giant like Chinese throwing star. So if you've been with the channel for a while, you know we put a ton of work into building and maintaining this pond. Digging it, adding the beach, the floating dock, the solar powered well pump, and then this summer I built that bridge up by the house to get out here, the outdoor shower, and the one thing we're lacking is Wi-Fi. I mean, I know what you're thinking, first world of problems, Adam, you really need Wi-Fi at your pond. I kind of want to do this for multiple reasons. One, for my guests, there is no Wi-Fi out here, so if people want to stream their music or sit out here on the beach and watch a movie with the kids, we can do that. It's just far enough away from the house that my cell phone dances between cell data and the house quite a bit. If you have Wi-Fi turned on, it's really frustrating and annoying. But I think more importantly, it's for security purposes. I want some cameras out here to keep an eye on things, both game and otherwise, if we have trespassers and whatnot. I'm also a huge fan of Wi-Fi enabled devices and smart lights. So now that we have power out here to the solar powered well pump. I could hook some lights up like that. If we have Wi-Fi coverage, I could set lights on timers or on controllers for my phone and have illumination all the way around the pond be pretty cool but you don't care about my reasons you want to see how these things work and if they work so let's go figure that out so this past summer i ran data cable from our house out to our barn never mind that mess so it comes along the little path here across the bridge and into the barn it's popping in right there and i have that data cable landing into a little tp link unmanaged switch which is going to be our hub for this setup so the data cable comes in, then you have your landline out, goes into this little box here that is powered. So you have your data in, and then this gives you additional power so that your ethernet becomes, as they call it, PoE, power over ethernet. So now your ethernet cable can power each of these devices. But with that setup, it's nice because you plug the cable in and you're good to go. I'm gonna preface this all with, I'm no IT professional. I'm just a dude who can read directions and follow them. I know enough about networking to be dangerous, that's about it. So I said they're similar but different. They're both Wavelink AX3000s. This one is omnidirectional, this one is directional. So this one will throw more of a cloud coverage and this one's more point to point. It has obviously six antennas, I believe seven DBI each, that's kind of the power rating. And this one has four 12 DBI. So this one is more for, I'm trying to target that location right over there and it throws like a cone at it. This one is more for kind of cloud coverage, call it like putting a dome or a sphere over an area you're trying to cover. I think this is more so going to be what we want. It's going to kind of cover a wide area over the pond. This is good for grabbing a bunch of devices. This is more for if I want to point it right toward, say, a barn. Like if I wanted to get Wi-Fi just in this barn, I could point it right at it. And then that small location would have internet. This one has an advertised range of about 300 meters. And this one has a thousand meters, so you can see the difference. And we're gonna test them out and see what we can get real world on these. For now, I'm just gonna temporarily get them up there on these poles. Obviously this outbuilding or side structure is not done, so temporary. So I won't put the waterproof plugs in the bottom of these that they have where the ethernet goes in. I'm just gonna take some zip ties and get them up there. I have already set both of these up, meaning that once I plug them in, they're gonna be broadcasting Wi-Fi. They got their own network name going right now with a password. I'm not gonna show you that part, like I said, if you can read directions, then you can figure this out. Their interface is super easy to use. I'm not even gonna show you screenshots because what's the point? I'm telling you, it's easy. Plus there are way smarter dudes on the internet with regard to IT than me. So I would misstate something, I'm sure. But I can climb a ladder and slap some stuff together. I can do that. This one being direction, I'm gonna point it out this way so we can kind of walk down that field or down that trail over there and really get some distance on it. Good old Harbor Freight zip ties. It's easier said than done. It's gonna be a crapshoot whether I get anything on that or not. I haven't studied the pattern. I think I should be able to get signal with it being this high off that, but we'll see. I'm really more interested in the one with all the antennas. Getting smarter. Put zip ties on it first this time. It's probably worth mentioning that these antennas are 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. So if you buy this unit and you're putting this together, make sure you get the 2.4s on the 2.4s and 5s on the 5s. I mean, they're labeled, but hey. Let's plug this in. You probably can't see it, but it looks like the status light is on. Like I mentioned before, there is like a whole waterproof plug. You can see the threads up in there. 
that makes this completely watertight but this is just so i can get backhoe wi-fi online i'll tell you that right there looks like i'm doing something serious out here now we're about 150 feet away from the barn i'm gonna do a little speed test on my phone here you can see it clocking there i'm not gonna do the whole screen share just absolutely cooking look at that over 800 megs right now it's not blurry so we got 819 up and 389 down absolutely amazing Let's just keep walking and see what we can't do. I'm now out by the solar panels, and the well pump, about 325 feet away from the barn. Let's see where we're rolling now. Sorry, if I was more professional, I would screen share. 833 up, 451 down. Let's keep walking. What was my number from the first one? Did it get faster? I think it did. If you've been with the channel for a while, you know where I'm going. Top of the berm. It's not too bad. It's still insanely steep. This camera doesn't have zoom, and I don't know if you guys can see the barn peeking through up there or not. I think about you breaking the trees over here. You can kind of see it up there. All right, this is about the middle. See how far we are. All right, per my GPS, we're about 600 feet away now. Still rocking a decent signal. My megs dropped quite a bit. So I'm sure these trees didn't help. That's significant degradation on that one at about 600 feet. I don't think these trees help much. But that was about six megs down, six up. Let's go over this way and see if we can get out of these trees. You probably can't see me with the sun. And see what it'll do, a more direct line of sight. All right, so I came down off the berm. I'm about 600 feet away still, but I ran it again just off camera, and it was screaming. Pretty sure my feet were above the height of the access point out there. If you guys aren't familiar, that thing's about 35 feet tall, and that ladder was not anywhere near that. So I'm standing here now, cooking again at 600 feet, 400 plus megs, 458 down, 211 up. And now here's the true test. All those speed tests are one thing, but it's like, can you watch a Spicer Designs video? Or a Bro Town Acres video? Or even a One-Eyed Customs video? Way out by your pond with no data. That's what this is all about. So I'm gonna meander back up to the barn. I'll continue to test this, just to make sure there's no dead zones as we walk. But it's already accomplishing exactly what I want. I'm still getting great readings out here. And so now I can have illumination if I want it. I can put lights on these trees that I could turn off and on. Powered by the electrical panel that's now out there by the well pump. Security cameras on the back end of the property. Game cameras. This is going to be great. Camera on the kids play set if we want. The options are pretty much endless. And so yeah, I'm not an IT expert. I'm actually an accountant, but I can follow directions. So, so the setup is pretty easy. You can set it up kind of three different ways. You can set it up as an access point like I did. So that means you run a data cable to it. And then that broadcasts your internet. You can set it up as a repeater. So it's kind of the same situation, but it's just grabbing wireless internet you already have, boosting the signal and sending it out. Uh, or you can set it up as like a mesh system, which I don't have. I think the access point, the way I did it, with the landline to it and then broadcasting is probably the, the best way to go. I have a couple different wireless access points around our house. So what I will do is I will name them all the same, same network name. So if it's Indy Farm Life 1, they'll all be Indy Farm Life 1 with the same password. That way on your cell phone or tablet or whatever, as you're roaming the property, your device is smart enough, it'll find the strongest signal. So it will seamlessly move from access point to access point. And so you've got seamless coverage across your property. Walk out here in the dock and test it. We'll test it on the fly as we're moving here. Use some more water. 400 up, 323 down. I want to actually get a reading on the far side of it now, see if it is broadcasting backwards. And then I want to set up that other one and give that a test too. Again, this one that's hooked up now is going to be the one that I use principally, but I'm sure I could find a use case for the long range bomber. So I pulled the plug on that one and popped the cable into the, what I'm calling the long range bomber. I did get like 150 megs about 200 feet away behind this one in the house. So it works both ways for sure. So now we're gonna go walk that way. We gotta go to the far side first and kind of double back. So we'll go about two or 300 feet to the left of this unit. So if we get signal there, then that means it's throwing a pretty good size cone. We'll see, but we're gonna way back that way. Okay, we're back in the about exact same spot right here by the berm where we were testing that last one. And I just ran it and we are on it, even though it's pointing that direction but it's only about 10 megs down and I think like eight up. So right there you can see how this one's very directional, especially when you point it in a direction. And the other one's Omni kind of throwing a sphere. So if you need broad coverage 
over a pretty good size area, you're gonna want the one uh, that has all the antennas on the external side. Whereas the one we're testing now is directional. So hopefully we're gonna see when we walk down that trail that we're gonna pick up a big wave of internet once we get down there. I just tested it. We are about 725 feet away and we got 100 megs down and 20 up. I honestly don't know exactly where this thing's pointed. So setting it up could be more of a to-do. I probably won't fine tune it, but we're gonna see what we can get. All right, we went to about 1600 feet as a direct line as the crow flies away before we really started losing any kind of retrieval on the phone. The speeds weren't much better than what I quoted to you a minute ago. That one takes more setup. You've got to kind of dial in where you need. You making faces back there? That one takes a whole lot more setup and dialing it in because you're shooting it at a direct point. So it'd be point to point, like I said, to a barn and a little bit more work than I want to do. What are you doing back there? I won't continue to fight that today. I'm not really worried about setting it up and pointing it at the middle of a cornfield. But I do think it would do it based upon how well the other one performs. So at some point, maybe we'll uh, try to set that up and have it more targeted. So we are back out here by the well pump and solar panels. Just ran it again using that long or range wind and got 60 megs up and like 50 down. If you had a use case where you needed like a long range dedicated shot and you also wanted to get a little coverage, widespread coverage along the way, you could do it. But I think for most people, you would want to go with the first one I tried. I'll link them down below. I don't remember the model number differences of those. I was able to get 600 feet range, no problem. It's advertised up to 300 meters, so that's just under a thousand feet. But I had 600 foot range and I was getting you know, 250 megs or 300 megs. I should have probably tested it further, but at 600 feet, I'm good. So time will tell what I do out here with, you know, security cameras and whatnot and the important stuff like remote illumination, things of that nature, you know. I do one more box checked for the pond. Slowly but surely, this thing is becoming what I've wanted. But the project is slow now that winter's on its way and we'll get back to it in the spring. What are you doing? The fire bigger like I was telling you, when you get back, we can put some more fire wood in. That one bounced out. Now think about this, you can do internet anywhere you want. Like you can play your tablet on the other side of the berm if you want to. Excited? Yeah. And I can do my Nintendo Switch. And Nintendo Switch. Which is happy. See you guys next time. Happy Take care. Morning.